Well, million of ba- millions of banking customers are the latest alongside utility and telco consumers facing a mean charge for simply receiving their account statements in the post. Some banks are slugging customers $2.50 per statement per month to receive hard copies that come on the back of their record cash profits. Telstra charges customers $2 to receive paper bills on some plans, while Optus charges $2.20. 50 Up Club spokesman Christopher Zinn is on the line, and this is one of his pet haters, I believe. Christopher, how are you? Yes, I'm very well, thank you, Ron. Although looking into this subject does make my blood boil, so that's maybe not too good for the health. Well, I tell you what, I've just been slugged by this in the last couple of weeks because I thought I'd do the right thing. I finally got my act together and did the shopping around for the telcos and did the bundle, and that was all good because I saved money. But in the process, come hell or high water, there, there went the free, the free paper bill, I can tell you. And look, it adds up. And if it's uh, a couple of bucks a month, then that's not an insignificant amount. But look, really, it's the principle of the thing. The whole shift to the digital economy is made things more efficient at lower cost. So really, there should be a discount which comes from that, yeah. not an added cost to those who either choose to uh, or are unable to move. I mean, there's 4 million households in Australia that aren't on the the internet and of course those tend to be older people poorer people indigenous people people who were doing it tough anyway mm. so actually to add an insult to ign- and insult to injury by charging them extra for something that they always got for free i think is outrageous and uh, i think there are more and more people feeling the same way yeah well there's that two aspects you just raised one is the fact that people have don't have access to the internet the other is if there's going to be a saving by not sending out the paper bill surely at the very least it should be shared with the customer Well, exactly. I mean, you know, this is actually, this is an issue around the world you won't be surprised to hear. And uh, in some places they argue, I've seen it argued that in fact they give a discount to all customers and they just make those who want paper bills pay a little extra, which would Mm. perhaps take them back to what the charge would have been anyway, if you understand. I mean, there's some real cockahoot arguments going on. The simple fact is that, uh, you know, some people need paper bills because they can't get it any other way. I think there's a very good reason to get paper bills, certainly bank statements, certainly credit cards, so you can check them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's no doubt there's far less likelihood for people to check things online in detail, and as consumer advocates, that's what we always recommend because we know uh, the banks make mistakes. They don't always put $4.3 million in your account by mistake, in this case that's going on at the moment. Yes. Normally they take away more than they should do. So. There's a very good uh, good reasons to have paper bills. I'm sure the point is there's many people who are very happy doing things online mm. with their mobile phone. They tend to be younger. They're more digitally savvy. That's great, and, you know, more power to them. But I think to leave everyone and those who aren't happy with it, either through their ability to use, go online or use online or their confidence, I think that's not only unfair, it's just rotten. I mean, really, we're almost a generation before we're at the stage where you can just presume that people will be able to do this online. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's not straightforward. Now, there are some, you know, you mentioned Telstra. A yeah. bit. There, I think there is something we can do. We can push back. Telstra, we're going to put that $2 paper bill to $3.20 before Christmas, but there was a cus- customer backlash, and they stuck with the $2. I might say they still charge you to pay in the bill in the shop, and that's yeah. another issue. Well, that's it. You know, people don't some people are very happy paying cash. They yep. don't want to use credit cards. They yep. don't want to pay online for reasons of security. It doesn't matter what their reason is. They should be able to be. The fact that you have to pay extra to use cash, that's another side of the same coin, if you like, of this argument, how people who choose not to be fully digitally engaged, and I think there's a perfect right for that, hmm. we're going to have a long transition zone, shouldn't be slugged extra. So what do we do about this? I know people power and 50 Up Clubs have uh, been wonderful at harnessing people power, but is there anyone who's offering an alternative that you don't have to pay for the paper well, bill? Look, yeah, there's a couple of things. I mean, the ANZ, for example, are saying if you, you can get a $10 credit on your account if you elect to move from paper bills to online bills. So I think that's, you know, people can take or leave that as they see fit, but at least they're using a carrot uh, as opposed to a stick. So I think that's a move in the right direction. Also, interestingly, there is a campaign called keepmeposted.org.au, um, which is actually really fighting uh, to make businesses keep take pledges to mm. ensure that they maintain paper bills to these particular groups. So I'm very interested to see how they get in. There are Keep Me Posted campaigns in the UK and Europe. So, you know, we're not alone in fighting this, and yeah, I think yeah. it's, uh, it's well worth 
pushing back against because businesses will bend, you know, if there's mm, enough fuss. Mm. i tell you what, there's a lot of pressure, though, at the moment. Uh, for example, the NRMA, and they, they haven't forced me to go paperless, but i tell you what, they suggested a lot, the constant emails, a couple of letters, your bill's coming up, why don't you go paperless before the bill comes up? Now, as I say, in fairness to them, they haven't, they haven't forced me to do it. But they're just one organisation that, that's pushing that way. And there's another organisation that if you're not careful and you log onto your account on the net, uh, the, the, the box about going paperless is auto-checked. Yeah, well, I think that is, is very dodgy. I mean, look, if it's a once-a-year subscription, that's something. And, yeah. you know, they chase you up to pay for it or whatever. But when it's the utility bills, banking bills, things that you need to be aware of, and, of course, they'll hit you for a late fee if you don't pay them on time. Yep. I mean, you know, they, they can't go wrong. Uh, I think, you know, paper is still very acceptable for some people. Yeah, I, absolutely. Thanks so much for your time. Much appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, Ron. Uh, 50 Up Club's Christopher Zinn. And have you been forced down the path of having to go paperless? You know, it's one thing for it to be an option. And I'll be very honest with you, it doesn't terribly worry me, except for the fact I think it's a rip-off, that there's a saving there and I don't get a piece of the action. That 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 peeves me off a little. And also, it also peeved me off just the principle that I, I logged onto an electronic account and there was an auto check on the go paperless. So if you're not careful and you don't tick, you know, uncheck that, suddenly, uh, unwillingly or un, unknowingly, you've gone paperless anyway. So, look, it is a great thing for those who want it. I know people who travel a lot who thinks it's fantastic because you don't have to worry about the mailbox filling up, that you know what bills are there, you can do it all electronically. But that very important point that Christopher raised there, that there is still a substantial proportion of people who aren't on the net, people over 70, people that are older, people that are not well off, uh, you know, we're not at the stage of having the cut through even though we're getting there, we're not at the stage of having to cut through technologically just to make the presumption that everybody is in a position to go paperless or wants to go paperless and that it won't disadvantage some people. Uh, your experiences with that, give us a call, one three one eight seven three.